Hello and welcome back to Fishing Tutorials. This video is going to run through how to tie a very popular rig for carp fishing, the Ronnie or Spinner Rig. This rig, known by two different names, the Ronnie or the Spinner Rig, is a very popular setup for carp fishermen these days. To be honest, uh, I'll admit myself and Alex haven't actually used this rig. It's not something that we personally use. We like to keep things really basic, as uh, those of you who've watched our main channel videos will know. But along with the help of Josh, who has helped put this video together, he works on fishing tutorials with us. He, he loves this rig and he really rates it. So he's helped us out to put this video together. There's numerous reasons why this rig is so effective and so popular amongst carp anglers, but I think probably the main thing is that you can quite easily change your hook without having to change uh, any of the rest of the rig. It's also a very versatile presentation which you can switch the boom material, switch the size of hook, uh, move different components around, switch them for different components, and basically it makes for quite a versatile rig. The main uh, use for this rig is to fish pop-ups quite close to the bottom. It's a quite a subtle presentation where you, unlike a chod rig where you're fishing your, your pop-up hung really high off the bottom, you're fishing your pop-up really quite uh, tight to the deck. And I think that's one of the reasons why people really like it and the reason why it works so well. Anyway, let's take a look at the kit that you'll need to tie up this rig. A spool of boom material, a curved shank hook, a spinner swivel, a kicker, a micro ring swivel, a hook bead, some 0.6mm crimps and a crimping tool, an anti-tangle sleeve, some rig putty, a spool of bait floss and some pop-ups. You'll also need a lighter, a pair of scissors and a baiting needle. Start by attaching the hook to the spinner swivel. Next, take a kicker and thread it down onto the hook and over the crook of the spinner swivel. Now take your micro ring swivel and thread that onto the hook. Follow this hook with a hook bead and pass this round until it's opposite the barb. You now have a completed hook section. Next, take about eight inches of boom material and one of your crimps. Pass the material through one of the barrels of the crimp. Thread the material through the ring on the spinner swivel. Next, pass the material back through the other barrel before compressing the crimp with your crimping tool. Put the crimp into the small groove on the tool. This is shown by a letter S. Firmly squeeze to compress the crimp. Now trim the tag end. Next, you'll thread your anti-tangle sleeve onto the hook link. Take your second crimp and pass the material through one of the barrels. Pass it around and through the other barrel to create a loop. This will make it easy to attach this rig onto your lead setup. Again, place the crimp within the small groove on the tool and give it a firm squeeze to compress the crimp. Now you can slide the anti-tangle sleeve down over the crimp, leaving the loop in the rig ready to attach onto your lead setup. Now cut a short length of bait floss, slide your chosen hook baits onto a baiting needle before threading it onto the bait floss. Cut the tag ends of the floss, leaving around a centimetre, before burning them down with a lighter. Press the lighter against the hook bait to secure it in place like this. Test your hook bait to see if the pop-up sits correctly. You may need to use some rig putty to balance the pop-up perfectly. A slow sinking hook bait will lift up into a fish's mouth as it sucks on the bait. So now you have the finished spinner rig. So in what situations would you use this rig? Well, um, first of all, there's two different lead arrangements that are quite popular to use with this uh, rig. There's the lead clip or the helicopter uh, lead system. The reason why the helicopter rig is probably the most popular way to fish this rig is because uh, when your lead plunges into the bottom, you, the rig is able to slide up the main line uh, to ensure that even if the lead's plugged in weed, the rig still sits down on top of it. If the swim that you're fishing is very silty or, or weedy, you can take the top bead on your uh, helicopter system, slide it right up uh, away from the lead. That will ensure that you, you're fishing effectively, even if the bottom is quite soft or weedy. However, if the bottom of your swim that you're fishing is very firm, you're fishing over clay, gravel or something like that, there's no need to have that um, top bead set so far away from the lead. Instead, pull it right down and you'll get better 
uh, better hookups. You're more likely to hook the fish uh, if it's slid right down. But of course you have to prioritize presentation. So uh, if it is weedy, slide the top bead up to make sure that your, your bait is accessible to the carp. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're fishing in weed or silt, maybe go for a slightly longer boom section. This is because the longer the boom section of your rig, the more likely it is to uh, settle down naturally over the top of any debris on the bottom. If it's quite short, it can sometimes be pulled down in amongst the weeds. If you happen to be fishing in quite soft silt and you only have a, a lead clip system with you on the, on the day and your lead's sort of getting plugged in the silt on the bottom, you may want to switch the boom material from a stiff fluorocarbon boom over to a supple uh, braided boom, potentially a coated braid or even an uncoated braid if the bottom of the lake that you're fishing is very soft. The reason for this is a stiff fluorocarbon boom when the lead plunges in, if you're fishing with a lead clip, that boom can sometimes kick up uh, and stick up out of the silt at a, at a strange angle. Basically, it doesn't look good and it, the fish is very, uh, very likely to touch that or get spooked off of it rather than approaching it naturally. So if it's quite soft and the lead's get, getting plugged, consider using a softer uh, braid boom section as that will lay down over the lake bed and contour with the bottom and won't stick up at an angle. If the bottom that you're fishing over is firm, hard clay or gravel, you won't need to worry about that. Just use a fluorocarbon boom, nice stiff one, that'll kick your lead away, uh, kick your rig away, sorry, from the lead perfectly every time. The spinner rig can be used in a number of different uh, baiting situations. I've seen people catch fish on the spinner rig whilst baiting with a nice spread of boilies, and I've also seen it work very well over a, a, a tight patch of pellet or particle. Some people will use this rig as a sort of single hook bait approach, sort of a, a method that they'll um, just cast at showing fish with a little PVA bag maybe, and that seems to work quite well too. The big difference between this rig and the Chod rig, for example, is the distance that the pop-up sits off the bottom. The Ronnie rig enables you to present a pop-up bait just off the bottom, so it kind of, from a distance to the fish, just looks like another one of the loose feed, like the, the loose offerings but it is in fact uh, got a hook underneath it. There are a few different hook patterns that you can use for tying this rig. In this demonstration, we used a curve shank hook, but if you prefer to use wide gapes, long shanks, or uh, crank hooks, for example, uh, you can also use them too. The only important thing to keep in mind is that it's beneficial to use a hook with an interned eye, just because it ensures that the, the hook and the kicker sits together nicely and creates that sort of claw shape on the bottom that will spin round and catch hold in the fish's mouth perfectly. Another point to mention is that you will mainly see this rig being used with pop-ups. However, we know a few people, including Josh who helps us put together these videos, who uses wafters instead of a pop-up. Not always, but sometimes, and that works quite well too. I'm not really sure about using this rig with a bottom bait. Uh, I know that one of the main advantages of this rig is that with a buoyant, uh, with a buoyant hook bait, the claw shape that can rotate from the bottom of the swivel means that that hook will spin round and catch hold in, in the fish's mouth no matter what direction it takes it from and I think a slightly buoyant bait helps with that spinning process but either way if you guys at home have used this rig uh, to great success with bottom baits let us know in the comments below I'd be curious to, to hear if you guys use this rig with any other uh, bait uh, arrangements or whether you just use pop-ups like most people do. So in summary, this is a great rig if you want to fish a wafter or low-lying pop-up close to the deck. If you're interested in other pop-up rig tutorials or some other rigs that work well for carp, definitely check out the two videos on screen now to learn some more. Hopefully you enjoyed watching and we'll see you guys soon.